Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this is the long awaited, I don't know, you guys might not be awaiting this video, but for me it's overdue. Um, I promised it about two weeks ago and I'm just now filming it. So I apologize for that, but such is life. And here we go with my about me. And I had a couple questions, so thank you for the few of you who sent a question in. That was exciting for me. Um, I'm small potatoes here on YouTube, so that was exciting. So I'm going to get started with um, a little bit about me, kind of just telling you some general stuff, and then I'll answer the few questions I had. And that will be it. I do hope to keep this video fairly short. Um, I'm not going to ramble on forever, so I appreciate you watching. And if you haven't clicked subscribe, please go ahead and do that, and you'll see more content from me in the future. So, I also wanted to say that I am struggling with allergies, our whole house is, so if I have to take some cuts or breaks in the midst of this, um, that's what's happening. That's why I had to edit, because I started coughing. Okay, uh, I have no notes or anything, so this is just off the top of my head. So, who am I? Um, my name is Sarah, spelled S-A-R-A, -A, and yes, it is Sarah. Um, my family, that's what they called me, that's what they named me, that's what my best friends growing up have always called me. My husband calls me that, um, my in-laws call me that, everyone calls me Sarah. Um, like that knows me the, the closest, I guess you could say. Um, but I don't introduce myself as Sarah anymore. I, it's usually that conversation that you have afterwards because I, it's just easier to be like, I'm Sarah, I'm Sarah, you know, nice to meet you. And then if you get to know people and you feel like talking about it, you'd let them know, well, really it's Sarah, but I don't mind, you know, I hope my parents don't care that I don't introduce myself as Sarah. It's not that I don't like it. I actually think it's cool. Um, growing up, my best friend was named Sarah with an H and I was Sarah without an H and that's how we kind of knew the difference. So if they called for Sarah, they were calling for me and if they called for Sarah, they were calling for her. So anyway, that's my name, Sarah Williams. And I live in North Carolina, hence the name Carolina Hobby Girl. And I have lived in North Carolina my entire life. Um, I've kind of made a big circle in the western part of the state. So, grew up, well actually I guess I was, I was born in Hickory, but I, I spent a couple first part of my life in Lincolnton, North Carolina. Then to Hickory, then to Boone where I went to college, um, Appalachian State University. And yes, it's Appalachian. <laughs> Um, so I went to college up there. I love Boone. I, we talk about retiring there. I don't know if it'll happen or not, but I love Boone. Um, and then I got my first job in Wilkesboro, North Carolina and slash North Wilkesboro because it's all right there next to each other. Um, technically I lived in North Wilkesboro, but the office was in Wilkesboro. Um, then we came down south, finishing out this little, I guess it's more of like a backwards D shape actually, but anyway. Come south to um, Statesville, North Carolina, where we spent the first eight years of our marriage, and now we are in Mooresville, North Carolina. Um, and if you're not familiar with that area, it's it's north of Charlotte, so Charlotte, North Carolina, is where I can easily say I'm from, and everyone knows that. So, <sighs> okay. So, um, sorry, I had a, had a message from my husband. So. He's watching the kids for me. <laughs> Sorry, he just told me that he was inside and Austin might make his way up here. And I think Austin has already made his way up here because <laughs> I can hear him outside the door. All right, so let's go ahead and get into family. So I'm married. My husband's name is Bradley. We have two amazing little boys, um, ages four and one, Ian and Austin. And life is wild and crazy. Um, I stay home with the boys. Um, I still do some work from home opportunities. Um, I have, so when I was working, it was in IT and I worked for Lowe's companies for a long time. I'm very passionate about that job. It was my first and it was just a lot of fun. I learned a lot. I love the company. Um, and then I, moved out of that into a consulting business. I actually specialize in Microsoft Project Server. So I did that for a long time, for several years. And then once I finally decided to stay at home, I still have some opportunities to occasionally do some of that same consulting work that I did before I left. 
So sometimes I'll do that. I also started a Rodan and Fields business, so I do that. Um, and just a couple little odds and ends jobs here and there if it becomes available. Um, like my friend is in web design and sometimes she'll reach out to me for questions or, or do you know how to do something? And, and you know, sometimes I, I can help her and sometimes I can't. So it's not all up, up my alley. But in general, we can just say IT report development type stuff. Um, is what I do and what I've done but mostly I'm at home and that's been an adjustment but it's been so fun and I can't believe my oldest is already basically going into his last year of preschool so one more year and he'll be in elementary school which is crazy um, but anyway so that's me that's the family um, let's talk about the YouTube channel real quick I think that's all all else I wanted to talk about personally and then we'll jump into the questions so why did I start YouTube? When did I start it? Why do I make these videos? Let's talk about some of that kind of stuff. So I started my channel, I'd have to go back and double check, but probably close to a year ago now. Um, so it's currently August. It was, pr um, it might've been a little bit before August, 2016, but it was um, basically a year ago, I think, because I kind of started it right when I found Erin Condren but because I saw other people posting videos of like opening their Erin Condren like open boxes and that kind of thing and I thought hey I can film opening my box for the first time you know so I, I that's kind of what started it for me and then plan with me I was like hey I can film myself doing a plan with me and I thought I don't know if anyone else agrees but I kind of thought I came at it I, I liked I wanted to do it because I thought I came at it with the approach of someone who is learning like learn along with me versus a lot of the videos I saw people looked like pros like they knew exactly where they were gonna put every single sticker every single time and I eventually learned that a lot of the channels similar to that are actually shop owners which is fine but they're like showcasing their stickers and, and I totally understand that and that's fine um, there's nothing wrong with it but it made me realize okay not many people are doing plan with me's that are kind of just ad hoc. Now I say that there there are plenty there are lots of people that do plan with me's. Um, I've I've continued to learn more and more, but that's what I that's what started me, and I thought um, or that's what I started with, and I thought that that would be kind of neat. Now granted, I <laughs> went all over the place with my planning style, and I think that's something that everyone does. You you. You try some things, you see other people do some things, so you want to try it, and you think it's neat, and it might be fun, and then it might not be really functional for you. And so there's just that hard way, that hard thing, I think, of finding balance between fun and creative and actual fu actually being functional. So I'm still getting there. I wouldn't say I've mastered it by any stretch of the imagination. And sometimes I have weeks where I don't need to be super functional because we're just hanging out at the pool all day. <laughs> I mean, we're not really doing anything. But come school year, and especially if I'm, I'm actually not working a paid job right now outside of Red Inn and Fields, I'm not working like a consulting job right now. So I'm not super, um, I guess I shouldn't say, I'm not very, there's not certain hours of the day that I need to work, so to speak. Um, or I haven't made it like, like okay, I need to work. Like, a lot of times when I have my consulting jobs, I actually get childcare, um, whether it's, excuse me a minute, whether it's my family or a neighbor or something, I'll, I'll get someone to watch the kids so that I can focus. And I don't really have that right now, so we're very much kind of do what we want when we want to do it, no big deal. So for reasons like that, I don't, or for weeks like that, I don't really need to be super functional. So. Um, but anyway, that's kind of what started my channel and I also did a paint with me where I actually painted my front door and videoed, filmed myself doing it. And I, it's the funniest thing, I just want to mention this to anyone who's starting out with YouTube. You know, I've made that video a long time ago and I don't think it got very many views at all. And then the beginning of this year, 2017, I started being more, I, I learned that YouTube... So I learned that YouTube cares about consistency. So I started trying to be very consistent at when I uploaded because I wanted to see, will it get me more viewers or subscribers? And it definitely did. But what's even cooler, I think, is that that video that I posted a long time ago started getting more views. 
It has to be because I started being more consistent. So YouTube started showing my videos more often. So it was really neat to see people start to see that painting video that I did a long time ago. And then I also wanted to say that that's the reason, that's honestly the reason I wanted to start doing YouTube. Plan with me videos are just more easy to do. Like I'm, I'm getting, <clears throat> I'm planning anyway. I already have my setup. I just have to turn on the camera and do it. And it's something I do every week. So I thought it would be easy for me to post it every week and help keep me consistent at posting. But what I really wanted to do and the whole reason I wanted to start my channel was because I learned a lot, like watching other people, for example, paint their doors or do a, a DIY or do like a craft with their kids or whatever. I just learned that I was, I, I guess I've become more visual. I don't know if I've always been this way or not, but seeing someone else do it makes a huge difference for me and actually learning it. Like I can retain it. I, I can watch a video and then not really have to refer back to that video to go and do it myself. Versus if I read something, I'm constantly like looking back at what I just read to like remember what's the next step, what's the next step, what's the next step. But a video, it just, it stays in my mind. And so because I benefited from other people's videos, there were a couple things, and I don't have it off the top of my head, but there were a couple things I was hoping to find on YouTube and I couldn't. And so it made me think, well, if I'm upset because I can't find something on YouTube that I wish I could find, then I should contribute whatever I can contribute and help grow the YouTube world, the, the videos that people use and find helpful on YouTube. I should contribute whatever I can. So that's my intention. I'm very far from actually putting in the content that I really want to put in. I love doing plan with me's. I love doing my planner. And like I said, it's fun and it's easy sort of <laughs> to do a plan with me. But I, I want to do more like DIYs or even reviews of products because that's something else I find super helpful. Um, like, like when people, like my hair right now is a mess, but I have been eyeing that, um, excuse me, I'm never going to get through this video if I keep coughing. Ugh. Jeez. Okay. I am eyeing that head candy um, straightener that like you brush through your hair for this right here. This is air dried hair. It's very thick. There's no product in it. It's very whatever. And I just think that that product from what I've seen on other people's videos that it looks like it would actually do well in my hair. And I'm kind of wanting to get one. So <laughs> we'll see. And if I did get one, I could do a video. Watch me brush my hair out. <laughs> but anyway, that's kind of what I hope to share on this video. But I for the time being, we'll continue doing Plan With Me's and the creative stuff. So I have, before, when I started my video, it was, my idea was more about, sorry, when I started my YouTube channel, my idea was more about how-tos and DIYs and that sort of thing. But at getting into planning has then got me into art journaling and just journaling in general and being more crafty about it. And now I'm obsessed with that. So the few videos you've seen where I created like a greeting card or I showed you my journal cover. I think I posted that a week, last week or something. <clears throat> Excuse me. <sighs> Try not to cough. Um, those are actually a lot of fun for me too. And so again, that's fairly easy in terms of just turn the camera on, show you what I'm doing and then edit it and maybe do a voiceover later or something. So. Sorry, I keep looking at my time. My, my light is blocking it, so I have to like move to check it. So I'm probably definitely gonna run out of time and have to loop the camera, but we're gonna go ahead. I think that's all I wanted to say about me and the YouTube channel and why I'm doing it. And that's all I'm gonna say for now. Um, if I grow more and more, I mean, I'm more than willing to do Q and A's. If you wanna ask a question, I'm more than willing to answer it below. Um, and I'm sure there might be more Q&A question, you know, type videos in the future. So now let's get to the actual Q&A because so I've got my phone and there's a couple. So let me, I'm going to start with the ones I saw on YouTube and I think I had one on Instagram. So, all right, your teeth are so pretty and white. Do you use something in particular? <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. Um, Leslie is actually my good friend, by the way. Um, 
Um, so it's so funny that she said that because the video that I know she was watching that she commented on, I went back and looked at it and I thought, oh, my teeth actually kind of do look a little white, I guess. So it's funny that she asked that. Um, but thank you. I just want to say that a lot, it's, it's probably been eight years, but I did use Crest White Strips a long time ago and I, I don't remember the, the like rules on them or whatever, like the instructions, but I want to say it was like good for 30 days or maybe 60 days or something like that. So I kept up with it. So whenever it was technically like done or like should be running out or whatever, I redid it for at least for at least like two or three treatments I remember. But then I started feeling like it was getting, um, my teeth were getting sensitive. And so I asked my dentist, dentist about it and he recommended Sensodyne. Oh, maybe you can see that. It's the Sensodyne Pro Enamel. Um, and it actually is gentle whitening, it says. So I didn't even realize I was using a whitening toothpaste, but I am. And that's what I'm using. I love this stuff. It does not bother my teeth at all. It doesn't, it feels gentle. It tastes good. I feel like I have fresh breath with it. Um, I use subscribe and save. So this comes occasionally from Amazon. And yeah, that's what I use. <laughs> all right, what's the next question? <clears throat> do you have pictures up of your youngest child what is your process of putting up pictures from recent photo shoots do you replace any pics or hang up new ones I don't have many of my of child number two just from lack of time child number two syndrome at its finest yes <laughs> amen to that and uh, at, at child number two syndrome and no I do not have pictures up of my youngest child <laughs> so you are not alone in the least um, so I did photo shoots for both children. So like their first whole year of, of, um, life, I did like photo shoots. And so the first child, yes, I printed them all out and got them four. Of, I did four, like four increments. So they've got like their, their newborn, their three month, I think three or four month, and then their eight month and then their one year photo. I've got them framed and they're all up now. Keep in mind that we moved. So I had envisioned what I was going to do for child number one and then child number two and where I was going to put them on the wall. Child number two and then we moved. So we're in a new house. So I have to figure out what do I want to do with those pictures now. So yes, I have the photos and they're on the computer. None of them are printed. <laughs> but yes, I need to do that. And so my plan, well, number one, I have to figure out what I want to do. But personally, in my new home, we have two stories and we have a... Like I've seen where people put collages up on like the wall going up next to the stairs. And that is actually ours is an open plan. So it's actually like viewable from when people walk in the front door, they can see those photos. So I think I want to use that as where I'm going to put the photos. And since I've already got four framed for my first child, all I need to do is get four more framed for my second child and figure out how, how I want to arrange them. Um, do I replace photos? So right now, no, because I don't have enough up to actually like replace. But for example, my oldest got his finally good picture, a good picture from school. Finally, his three-year-old pictures turned out great. And I want, I need to get that framed. Um, and I feel like I will replace those. Um, I don't, I'm just not one that wants to cover all of my walls in photos, like every single year of every single photo. I would like to have like a prominent place to put the picture and maybe keep it updated. And then either keep an album maybe where you put the old picture if it, you know, but I would probably leave them in there for as long as I could, but you probably can't leave them in there for like 13 years worth of school photos. So maybe have an album where you could slide the picture in for the previous years and then at least you still have it but you're prominently displaying the one photo. That's what I kind of want to do. I also have my nephews who I get pictures from pretty much on a regular basis. And I kind of want to do the same thing for them and I'm still haven't gotten that together either. But I, that's my intention. Like I think I usually get like a five by seven from them, I think, or a whatever the one size below that is. And just have a frame with that size photo in it. And then when, when my sister-in-law asked me, you know, what size do you, picture do you want? Try to get the same size so I can just replace with their updated photo. Um, that's kind of what I want to do there. And I feel like you had one more question or is that it? No, that was it. Do you replace things or hang up new ones? So it just depends, but that's kind of my intention there. I also had a little thing just to talk about this for a minute. It was like all these little bitty cubes 
um, I, if I can take a picture and like pop it in, I'll do that because that'll probably be easier to explain. Y'all do not know how frustrated I am right now with this cough. I just wanted to come here and do this video and be done with it. Ugh. Anyway, it's like the perfect size for like wallet photos. So if you had like a wallet photo frame, those little just like acrylic things. We had it hanging up and I had little pictures of like all the, like my friends' kids and just like we had a picture of my husband's grandparents, um, all different like little pictures that we just happened to have. And I just really liked it. Like it was a pretty piece to be hanging on the wall. And then it was still like, it, it was nice and it felt special because it had pictures of people we loved in it. So, but they're small. It would be like your wallet size photo. So that's an option if you have like other people that maybe you don't want like an 8x10 hanging up, but you want to have a picture of them somewhere in your home. I, I really like that piece. I don't know where I got it from. I think we actually may have gotten it for a wedding present. I have no idea, but I'll, if I can put in a picture, I will. So your lashes are amazing. Are they naturally that long or do you use extension or something? I'm not crafty or good at planning at all, but I want to try a collage wall. Any ideas or tips on how to do that and make it look good and not just thrown together? Okay, so that's two questions. So first, my lashes, thank you. I don't know if you can see them now. I do have makeup on and I have mascara on, but thank you. Um, these are not false lashes. These are my lashes. And I actually use two products to make them awesome. And that is one lash boost. I don't know if you can see this, but I told you I'm Rodan and Fields consultant. So I use lash boost. This stuff is awesome and it works. I noticed results in four days. Um, and after about four weeks, I was ready to stop using it because I felt like they were long enough, but I still use it as like a maintenance thing. And then this, I have finally found the best ever mascara. So if you've never used this and you're looking for an awesome mascara, it's L'Oreal Voluminous. This is original in, is it just black? They also have carbon black, which I think I ordered recently and I'll be getting in the mail. And they have blue, if you're a blue eye a mascara person. But between these two things, I feel like my lashes are awesome. I love them. Um, I never thought I would need something like this, the Lash Boost product, but I wanted to use it but since I'm selling it and I honestly love it. Like I, I'm amazed that I saw results as quickly as I did and as well as I did. So thank you for noticing. <laughs> and then she also asked about collage walls. So I have to do it separately, but I have my first ever collage wall right here beside me in my craft room and I'm in love and I'm so proud of it <clears throat> and so I will try to talk a little bit about it when I show maybe when I pop in the video but I just want to say that my approach and what I've seen from other people because I am not an expert by any stretch of the imagination is start somewhere okay <clears throat> it was so hard for me because I think about it and think I think about things and think about things and think about things and nothing ever happens. So in the case of this wall, when I show it to you, there's a huge picture right in the middle that I got because I just love the photo. I had no idea where I was going to put it. Someone was selling it in like a yard sale and I was like, I'm taking that picture. That's a beautiful picture. So I got it. It ended up looking the best in my craft room. Sorry, I sound so snotty right now and I'm sorry. But it ended up looking the best in my craft room and I put it up on the wall. It was the only thing on the wall. And over the next couple weeks, I started finding things that kind of matched in the same color and sizes that I thought would look good. And so I picked those up and I finally just started putting them on the wall and I love it. Now, I, and I may not be finished. I may add more to it as time as something comes along. And so I think, I think you can consider a collage wall an ever-growing project potentially I mean by all means if you know you want six photos then just do six photos and be done with it but don't hold yourself back if you get more photos or you have something else that you think might look good up there put it up there and find out and I did not you know I've seen they have like the things you can buy to like put it up on the wall and map it all out and then like lay it down on the ground and I don't know, like, or like lay it on the ground and make sure it all matches. 
or where you're gonna place everything, draw it or whatever, and then put that thing up on the wall and like put it on your nails or whatever. That sounds great. And I would probably I will probably use something similar when I'm working downstairs, like what I want to do along the stairwell. But for this particular one, and granted it's in my craft room and I'm probably the only person that sees it, um, I wasn't too worried about it being perfect. And, I'm, and, and honestly, I don't care if it's not perfect because it's on the wall. I finally have pictures on my wall and that's like the most important thing. So I love it. I'll show it to you. Sorry, I keep staring off into space and you're like, what is she looking at? But I love it. It's awesome. And it's perfect for the craft room, which you'll see in a minute. But so just put it up there. And then the other thing I wanted to say, I think it was from Do It On A Dime. If you don't follow her, you should. But she always talks about this stuff from the Dollar Tree, and let me see if I can find it. I think it's right here. Poster tack, a dollar. So like right now, and I'll show it to you this way so you can see what I mean. There are photos up there that are crooked, okay? And you know, it's just cause it's kind of like off center, like, you know, on the nail or whatever. It's kind of hanging a little funky. Um, I didn't put proper hanging like backs on every single picture up there. Some of them are just hanging because they're their block, um, whatever you call it, block. You'll see what I'm talking about. And so they just kind of like balancing on the nail. But you just take some of this, put it on the back, straighten it up, and tack it to the wall, and you're good to go. So you can fix the problems very easily with something like this. So my advice, just do it. Put something on the wall, then put another picture on the wall. <laughs> then put another picture on the wall. <laughs> And before you know it, you're going to have a collage wall, and I think you'll love it. So, good luck. Send me pictures. <laughs> All right. And then I think mm, someone said congrats on reaching a milestone. Nic Nicolette2803. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's exciting. Yeah, and in case you guys don't know, I'm doing this video because I hit 100 subscribers. So, it's, this is like my thank you. Just a way to let you guys know a little bit more about me. Alright, so I think the last question was on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> yes, so Plan With Mar has asked, what's the meaning of life? So, isn't, <laughs> isn't it like a number, like 41 or 42? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't look it up. I wanted to. I wanted to Google it before I started this video. Actually, I'm going to Google it real quick while I'm doing this. What's the meaning of life? Um, is it not on here? I thought it was going to show the number. Isn't it a number? I'm confused. Oh, the meaning of life 42. Is that it? 42? 42. The answer to life, the universe, and everything. I think the, the number is 42. Is that right? I know you're a numerology person playing with Mar. So anyway, I think it's 42. All right. So that's going to be it, guys. That's all the questions I had. Like I said, if you want to ask me more questions, feel free and I'll try to answer them as I can. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry for all the coughing. It's miserable, but we got to keep going. So again, click the subscribe button if you would like to. I'd love to have you be part of the family. And that's all for me. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Oh, and I do wear glasses. <laughs> I like to take them off for videos because of the glare. I don't really need them, by the way. It's only for astigmatism. So, like, things are just slightly blurry. But I don't technically need them to drive. But I just get so used to them that I end up wearing them all the time. So there's something else about me. <laughs> Bye, guys.